finally, by popular request, welcome to our Stump and Narnie Weber competition. <laughs> As you can see or hear, we have a studio audience with us today. I'm Glum Puddle. And I'm really, and we couldn't come up with a better name for this competition. We're really bad at making decisions. I'm Dot, by the way. She's Dot, by the way. Uh, good to have you back. Yes. Um, and if you're listening to this but not watching it, I would really, really, really recommend you watch it because I set up some, I spent a lot of time on the lighting and the video. So please, no, it's also going to help feed you. his ego yeah, a little be, bit more because it's going to help with. It's, we're going to have a lot of graphics and stuff, and it'd be super, super helpful. We are competing to see who is the nerdiest Narnie Weber. Basically, this is a feature we do at the end of most episodes of Talking Beast, the Narnie podcast, and by popular request, a whole episode of nothing but that. And we're going to watch me kick these guys' butts. So that's going to be really fun. Um, first off, just saying, uh, first off, huge thanks to the Don't Narnia. Don't look at me. I have, no, I have no need to boast in front of a camera. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I, I got nothing. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm just going to get into the competition. That'll be my answer. Yeah, good, okay. Good. okay just, keep, just keep talking. <laughs> uh, so for, really quick, huge thanks to the Narnia web staff that put this together. First off, thanks to you, the listeners who submitted questions for this. And special thanks to Patter Twigs Pal and Inkling especially, who really get gathered all the questions that were submitted and selected the best ones and yada 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 there's a bunch of people behind the camera here also Raidian, Melton Tolly and uh our maybe Aristotle our studio audience over here and our uh question reader all the way from London Coracle I should say good mortar Eve <laughs> Thank you for flying all the way from London just to be with us here today. Not really. Oh, it was for the horse and his boy it's play. It's a pleasure. <laughs> and here she taught us that it's elevenses, not elevenses. <laughs> yes. I would never, I would never, we've never known that. So, And that's not one of the questions. Yeah, it's not. Oh. But oh. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Nice try. Nice try. Okay, let's meet the contestants really quick. Dot, how many times do you think you've read these books? How confident are you? I have lost count of how many times I've read these books. So I'm either going to completely crush you or I will fail miserably, depending on how awake I am. I'm glad that wasn't one of the questions. How many times have you read the Narnia books? <laughs> you, you would have been stumped. Okay. All right, and really in. I I really can't say because it's been a combination of me reading them and then them being read to me, both on a personal level and the, my family, and then you know audio dramas, audio books. I have no idea. I probably read them cover to cover. I'd say seven times. I'd say maybe seven or eight. I've read bits of them so many times throughout the year, so it's hard to give it an exact number, but I'm feeling fairly confident I'm going to be in the running here. Nothing against you guys. I mean, really? yeah, I'm saying something against you guys. I'm saying I'm better than you. Let's so. say, yeah, that, that sounded <laughs> like you had something against Keep us. Keep talking. So uh, without further ado, Coracle, why don't you give us the rules? Right. Now, a correct answer gives you one point. If you need assistance, you can blow Queen Susan's horn, which gives you one of two lifelines. So once you can declare yourself stumped and receive a different question, and once you can ask for 30 seconds to try and find the answer in the book. So the player who is leading after all 24 questions and a last battle round is the winner. And here are the categories that you can choose from. Okay. Who's Who in Narnia, On the Shelf, Whistles and Whirly Gigs, If Only I Had Worked Harder at Geography, I Say, and At the Cinema. Okay, so I think we're ready to dive in here, right? Okay, I would like to start with the I Say category. Right, this question was submitted by Inkling. What two words does Eustace try to rhyme together while making a limerick? Narnia and Barnia. Correct. All right. Why are you clapping? You're losing now. You know, I, I have to run through the limerick in my, my head. <laughs> Part of a limerick. I don't use competitions as a way to just belittle people. Okay. That's, that's All right. <laughs> my turn, right? Uh, I will take on the shelf, please. This question was submitted by Skillet Dude. In the original British edition of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, Susan hopes to see rabbits when they explore the outdoors near Professor Kirk's home. Which animal did C.S. Lewis later change this to in the American edition? Oh, I know he did. I remember he did this. Okay, there I, are four I'm options. Sorry. Oh, good. A. Badgers, B, foxes, C, eagles, D, stags. 
I'm gonna go with uh, I remember that was a change. Uh, I'm gonna go with um, Eagles. I'm gonna make that my final answer. Okay. No, the judges are shaking their heads. That's not correct. Ah. The answer is foxes. You gotta keep things interesting. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I have no idea what the whistles and whirly gigs is gonna get me, so I'm gonna go for whistles and whirly gigs. Ooh. This is another question from Inkling. Where in the ruins does Susan find the chess piece? I'm going to go with the, uh, I think it was the gardens. No. No, that's not the correct. correct. The answer is by the well. Um, well, yeah. what are you going to do? <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten that. All righty. Uh, let's keep going with I say. She's going to smoke us. <laughs> <laughs> I say she I foresee might. the future. This question was submitted by Lord Argos, and it's from Horse and His Boy. When Arabus enters Lazareline's house, Lazareline describes the severe punishment she will inflict on anyone she catches talking about Arabus. What were the three punishments she mentioned? Let's see. Beaten to death burned alive, and then kept on bread and water for six weeks. There. <laughs> Correct. Does she get credit for the there? Uh, <laughs> and we're laughing because we just watched the horse and his boy play last night. So, yes, so. okay. Rigged. <laughs> okay. okay, we picked the questions before we saw what was in the play. <laughs> we weren't changing it this morning. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, At the Cinema. This was submitted by Artorius Pendragon. What are the characters that Warwick Davis has portrayed in Narnia? Okay, uh, that would be, so I believe there's three of them. He obviously played, most recently, uh, Nickabrick in the Prince Caspian movie, and he played Reapy Cheap in the BBC version. He also played, those are the two that are the most well-known. He also played Glimfeather in the BBC versions, and those are the only three I can think of. Final answer. Correct. On the board. Okay. I'm going to go without the cinema. This question was submitted by Monty Jose. What was the screenplay code name for the Prince Caspian film? I'm stumped. I'm going to have to blow Queen Susan's horn for another question. The answer to that one is toasty. Yes. Like a toasted sandwich. He is the seventh son of Hapatar Khan in the city of Te Teshban and had come to Narnia disguised as a merchant. What is his name? I'm stumped, guys. Stumped! Okay. Boom. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. So, okay. <laughs> We're all stumped. Uh, the only Tar the only Kalurman names I can think of from the last battle are Rish Atar Khan and Emeth. Yeah. yeah. As long as I can think of. So I don't remember if being the seventh son would mean he's he's a Tarkan or not. What's the answer? Emeth. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. We're, we're horse in his boy mode, I think, because of the play last night. So. Probably. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's just keep going with I say. Seems to be working for you. Yes. <laughs> and this question was submitted by Fire Fairy Twenty Three, and is from the magician's nephew. What is the first word out of Aslan's mouth in The Magician's Nephew? Narnia. Correct. All right. I mean, boo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will take, you know what? I'm going to try I say. Go for it. Another, another question from the magician's nephew, also from Fire Fairy 23. What words does Uncle Andrew say that are repeated exactly later by Jardis? Uh, how exact do I have to be? Because it was basically, um, you know, where exempt from rules. Ours is, a, you know, ours, ours is a higher destiny. You know, what, what would apply to someone like you doesn't apply to someone like me. It has, it has to, to be, be exact. exact words. So, okay. Um, um, ours is a high and lonely destiny, I want to say. Correct. Oh, I'll make that my final answer. Correct. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Why not? I'll go with I say. Nothing else is working for me. <laughs> <laughs> I say. Question from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, submitted by Inkling. How many times does Mr. Beaver say, true enough, Mrs. Beaver? I'm so glad you took this one because I yeah. have no idea. I'm, I'm, I really like the ones you've been getting, I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, because there's no gray area. I, I, this is, I guess, other exactors. Yeah. Um, three. Final answer. Not correct. What is it, Greg? Yeah. Twice. Two, right? Two. Times? Two. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, whistles and whirly gigs. A question from the horse and his boy, submitted by Monty Jose. What two colors, the lion and the ground, was the banner in the front of the Narnian procession on the way to Anbard? Ooh. I feel like the obvious answer is the wrong one. I'm going to blow the horn and look it up. Okay, so I'm going to grab one of the books in front of you. You have 30 seconds to find it in the book. A red lion on a green ground. Correct. Wow. Yeah, that was good. I just throw it, whatever. Those are, those are your set of books, by These the way. These are so my. Slight advantage. Douglas Gresham signed this <laughs> Why was dog <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, Gre- 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 Gresham signed that one, so it has his blessing on it. So it has an yes. advantage. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, who's who in Narnia. A question from Prince Caspian, submitted by Monty Jose. Peter mentions moles did the initial digging from the now overgrown orchard in Care Paravel. What was the name of the chief mole? Uh, I think I'll have to probably use a lifeline there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, blow Queen Susan's horn and look it up in the book. Let me know when my 30 seconds starts. Time. No, I was so close. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say... Uh, Glum puddle. <laughs> <laughs> and the correct answer is Lily Gloves. Oh, I wouldn't have gotten that. Ah, I can't believe that. It, it was, was on the page. Huh? It was you, on the page of Lily Gloves. I, I didn't get there. Ah. That's what I was looking at. It's like, the it's, camera lights, I, I'm you know? I'm looking at it like, it's Lily Gloves. Ah. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. Who's who in Narnia? This question from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, submitted by Lydia. Besides Mrs. McCready, what are the names of the servants of the three servants in Professor Kirk's house? I'm gonna have to blow Queen Susan's horn and look it up. Let's start the time now. Ivy, Margaret, and Betty. Correct. Right. Took me long enough. <laughs> it was on page one. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it was. What, what what is the score right now, by the way? But I wasn't gonna guess Ivy, Margaret, and Betty. I don't remember those types of facts. I'm sorry. It's such an iconic did line, guys, though. Did you, guys, did you guys remember Ivy, Margaret, Betty? Yes, uh-huh. because they're never Ivy, mentioned in the book again. The, the, the defining character is the book for me personally. <laughs> so the score so far: Glumpuddle two, Brilliant one, and Dot four. Okay. <laughs> Okay, All right. let's do whistles and more of the gigs again. I'm scared to choose that one. <laughs> Submitted by Impending Doom. That, that's encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> the coins people use in Kalorman are called crescents. What are the coins co- used in Narnia called? <sighs> okay, I'm stumped. Um, I'd like to use my last lifeline, please. I'm going to get a new question. The answer to that one was trees and lions. Ah. I had no idea. Ooh. Okay, new question from 
submitted by Inkling. The Inklings met in various locations. One of the more well-known haunts is a pub that now has a plaque dedicated to the group of friends. What is the official name of the pub and what is its local nickname? I believe the official name is the Eagle and Child and the nickname is the Bird and the Baby. And that judges just confer. You want with that? Yep. Happy with that? The judges say yes. Yay! Woo! All right. Yeah. It's actually bird and baby, bird right? And okay. the, the bird and baby. Close enough. I'm fine with that. Yep. The judges are happy. Fair enough. All right. Um, uh, I'm going to go with whistles and wrigglings. I guess I'm not nerdy, nerdy enough to know how to say that. Glad that's not a question. Whirly gigs. Whirly gigs. Excuse me. From the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, submitted by Mrs. Beaver. Mrs. Beaver herself. How much did Lord, Lord Byrne pay for Caspian? Uh, I'm going to say, oh yeah, so he's talking to Pug, and Pug asks for a, a really high amount at first, and so then he says, I'm hearing the focus on the family radio drama in my head right now, and I think Lord Byrne finally says, I'll give you 150. So I'm going to say 150. Final answer. The judges are thinking... The judges would sli- slightly more information, please. Are, are we looking for the current this kind of currency? Um, I'm going to go with uh, crescents then because I, I can't think of anything. But uh, d- I can hear 150 in my head right now. So your final answer is? 150 crescents. Correct. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Whoa. I'm just trying to make it interesting. <laughs> uh, let's go with at the cinema. This question was submitted by Jonathan Paper, and it is, name the actress who played the adult Susan near the end of 2005, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Again, some hard no. ones, I admit it, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought, oh, she thought it was adult Susie. No, no, Lucy, no, she didn't. Uh, she asked for the adult Susan. No, I don't know the answer. I'm stumped. stumped. Don't have I'm any stumped. lifelines. I right? don't have any so lifelines yet. Blow the horn. All right. He's stumped. Uh, the question. The answer was Sophie Winkleman. Uh, I yeah, did not know that. <laughs> Could have been older Lucy. That'd have been easier because Georgie Henley's older sister Rachel played yeah. Lucy. Yeah. So. I was sure her first name was Sophie, but I couldn't remember her last name. No. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, let's try Who's Who in Narnia. <clears throat> From the Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Submitted by Artorius Pendragon. What are the names of the two friends that Lucy spies on using a spell? That would have been a good one for a look it up in the book. Yes, it would have been. I don't know. No lifelines left? No lifelines left. The, uh, the answer is Marjorie Preston and Anne Featherstone. Mm. Stumped. Stumped. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with, uh, I think all of us seem to wish we'd worked harder at geography. Because no, <laughs> no one's picked that no one yet. No one's asked that one yet. And I do too, so I'm going to go ahead and say. Hashtag we're American. <laughs> uh, yeah. If, if only I'd worked harder at geography, I'd be better at this current question. Let's see what happens. Question submitted by Impending Doom. Oh, man. In, and it's from Voyage of the Dawn Treader. On what island would you find the town of Narrowhaven? On what island? Uh, so that's one of the Lone Islands, which is, uh, oh my gosh, well, how could it possibly blank on that? It's uh, the camera lights, I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> this is another a good one for look it up. Uh, I'm going to say uh, there's Terabinthia. And there's uh, Dorn. I bet you it's the third one that I can't remember that it's on. I'll bet you get, get, get you a million dollars. Um, Does he get the million dollars? If that's darn the it. one that he yes. can't guess because he bet a million dollars. Dorn. And is it Ava or Avra? I can't remember. I, I'm going to say Terabinthia, though, and that's my final answer. Okay, that's incorrect. <sighs> It was, in fact, Dawn. Ah. Terabinthia isn't one of the Lone Islands. 
Oh, so oh the million bucks. I'm glad there's no negative points there. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 where am I getting to Rabinthia then? It's one of the other islands that they come to. Oh, really? Oh, never mind. What's the other Lone Island then? Felimath. Ah, uh, this is so, okay. I, this is getting interesting. This is going really well. I'm doing really well, aren't I? <laughs> I hope, is this a good watching? Okay, Inter entertaining? I feel like I should just flip a coin. <laughs> let's go for who, uh, let's go for who's who in Narnia. A question from The Horse and His Boy, submitted by Monty Jose. In The Horse and His Boy, what is the name of Aravis's father? Just watched the play last night. I know, I know. The thing is, I've got her suitor stuck in my head. Ah. Uh. Uh. It's called Stump and Narnia, if I've ever know. <laughs> That's the challenge I'm we gave I'm trying to think. Us. I was like, ugh. Oh. That's the challenge we gave. Them. Yeah, we give just us, watched. Give us some time. nerdy stuff. So thank you, listeners, for the nerdy stuff. I can't think of it. I don't. I'm. I'm sure that Ahoshta is the uh, suitor. So I'm gonna. But I can't think of any other name that would be in that like, chapter. So I'm gonna I just have because I should have guessed Emeth when I was sure it wasn't Emeth. So and that was the name that came to mind. So I'm gonna go with Ahoshta, even though I know it's wrong. That's my final answer. So Ahoshta. Ahoshta. And that's not correct. Oh. The correct answer is Kidrash Tarkan. Kidrash. Oh. Did you, you know the, that? I did not. He got the name when he was. Thank a, you. Like, yeah, I didn't <laughs> know all that one all these were more like, do you guys know these are going? <laughs> <laughs> no. It should have been changed to Adult Rash when he got older, but okay. <laughs> They're both between like hashtag glad really got that question. <laughs> All right. Okay, last whistles and whirly gigs. Right, this question is from Magician's Nephew, submitted by Fire Fairy 23. Which animal does Lewis describe first when the animals burst from the ground during the creation of Narnia? Oh, no. Because <sighs> all of them are coming to your mind yeah, at once. Every single one. <laughs> It's not the elephants, it's not the stags, it's not the frogs. I'm going to throw out a random one because a point is a point, I think. Yes, a point is a point. Mm -hmm. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> Raven. Not correct. Mm -hmm. The answer is the moles. Oh, the moles. I couldn't remember it, but I was thinking some Duh. Kind of underground creature or something. I don't know. Duh, the moles <sighs> dig out. Yep. Okay. Uh, I will take uh, on the shelf for oh, I'll just on the shelf. Not I'll take <laughs> on the shelf for one hundred, please. The question submitted by Monty Jose. Almost every chronicle of Narnia has either fifteen chapters or sixteen chapters. Which chronicle has the most at seventeen chapters? Oh, I think I know this one. Uh, because, yeah, they all have between 15 and 17, I think. And uh, I believe, despite being, I think, the shortest book in the series, I believe The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe has the most chapters. Because The Hunting of the White Stag, I'm seeing a 17 above that in my head. So I'm going to say The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Final answer. That's correct. <laughs> and the score now is... Uh, Glum Puddle 4... Really in one, and dot five. Okay. There will be a chance at the end to kind of... <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. You've been getting... feel so much better now. We, we, built that in, we built that in just for you, man. Um, no, you've been, getting, you've been getting some hard ones. Tough luck. Yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't really care at this point. I really could not care less. Just gra grab something. <laughs> you got it. You must. Oh, choose. I have to. Okay. Yep. You okay. must choose. Okay, fine. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's let's do on the shelf. This question is submitted by Artorius Pendragon. In the Chronicles of Narnia, how many times does Lewis reference the titles of other Narnia books? <sighs> okay, so. I have to ask for clarification. Is he asking how many times he's using the title of the other Narnia book or referencing the other Narnia book story? Because that's 
there's going to be different answers. Referencing the title. Referencing the title. Like if you talk about Prince Caspian, that's just such a simple title. If you just throw in Prince Caspian, is that that's counting? No. No, it no, has to be actually referencing the book. Referencing the book. The book okay. itself, not the words in the book okay. title. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, I don't think the titles of the books are mentioned in the Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I think there's another reference in The Horse and His Boy. Well, no, wait. I don't think it's called The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I think they just talk about the time that Lucy went through the, wardrobe, the tale of how they entered Narnia. I believe in The uh, Silver Chair, they do... I think they do give the title of The Horse and His Boy because I think he knew that he was going to call it that at that point. Those are the only ones I can think of specifically. I'm going to go with two. Final answer? Final answer. The question, the answer, the final, the correct answer is three. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, this is what they are. What's th- the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe are both uh, a reference in both Prince Caspian and The Horse and His Boy. They do use the oh. title of The Lion, the Witch, mm-hmm. and the Wardrobe. Mm. Okay. And The Horse and His Boy is referenced in The Silver Chair. Right. Okay. <sighs> oh, I did. I forgot about that second wardrobe reference. Well, I knew they talked about the story. I just didn't think that they talked about the title. Oh, that was good. All right. Okay. Last round for everyone. Oh, oh dear. Okay. <laughs> If only I had worked harder at geography. Oh, that's what you're choosing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> A question from The Horse and His Boy. Submitted by Impending Doom. What is the name of the river that divides Aachenland from the... Des- the, the des- no, the deserts. I'm trying to say deserts. What is the name of the river that divides Aachenland from the deserts of the south? Anduin? Final answer. Incorrect. Yeah. I think you're in a different um, yeah. mythology. A different, yes. different oh. like, <laughs> I was like, that's the only river name I can think of. <laughs> the correct answer is the Winding Arrow River. Oh, yep. Okay. That's a tough one. All right. So this is the last one for me. All right. I'll go with uh, At the Cinema. And a final question from Artorius Pendragon. In which three Academy Award categories was The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe nominated? Uh, well, it won for makeup, and it was also nominated for sound mixing, and then it was robbed by King Kong in the visual effects category. Ten years later, I think it's over ten years later, and Kong has not aged well at all. Wardrobe still looks pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, makeup, sound, mixing, and visual effects. Final answer. Correct. <laughs> all right. So. Brilliant. Oh, that's yep. right. This is final round. <laughs> well, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Why not at the cinema? I had a question submitted by Monty Jose. What kind of animal hair was used to make Trumpkin's beard and wig in the Prince Caspian film? When are we going to tell him this is all a prank on him? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go with yak hair. Correct. All right. Oh. <laughs> You don't have to try to make me feel better, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a point number two, okay? <laughs> I mean, I gave a Lord of the Rings name. Sorry, for, one for of those them, in the so UK, I meant yeah, to not, you know, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Do you want an update on the school? Glum Puddle 5. Glum Puddle 5. Brilliant. Brilliant 2. And Dot 5. Ooh. Oh. Whoa. Right. Me and Dot tied going into the last battle round. Now. It's time for our last battle round, and in this round, all contestants will have 90 seconds to write their answers to the last question. Each right answer is worth one point. 
And no cheating looking at, well, the video evidence of one of us cheats and glances over, so no cheating at someone else's paper, no. Right, this is a question from Silver Chair, submitted by the Keeper of the Lantern Waste. Orange the Fawn mentions 14 different foods that centaurs eat for breakfast. How many can you list? Okay. I think you got the most. Yeah. Oh, I can give you the correct answers and you can compare it with your list. Oh, good. Porridge. Oh. Pavenders. Yeah, we're fish. Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Kidneys. Bacon. Omelette. Oh. Cold ham. Toast. Marmalade. Coffee. Beer. Coffee. Mm. Grass or grazing, hot That's mash, beer down. oats, and a bag of sugar. All right. Put down, beer, put down ale and not beer. Yeah. Dog. Oh, man. So I just got one. Of, I just got one of those. And <sighs> how many did you get that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I got four. Oh my yes. gosh. She's dominating. Okay. Right. So really, really got five in that round, and Glum Puddle got. One. <laughs> <laughs> and Dot got four. The final scores are Glumpuddle, six. Rillian, seven. And Dot, nine. Woo! Ah, sneaks in at the end and puts me in last place. <laughs> but Rillian got the most in the last round. He did, right. yes. Oh, my God. I like food. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh okay we were talking last night about how I like beer and I, said, I thought beer, no he wouldn't write beer he'd write ale well <laughs> <laughs> wow well, yeah I said I was trying to keep things interesting and I succeeded in losing in a really interesting way <laughs> thanks for talking so much at the beginning about how you're gonna win yeah <laughs> that's what it was trash talking um yeah, no one will accuse me of r rigging the questions now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that my wife helped with a lot of the questions. This, no, I just, you know, I didn't want anyone, I wanted it to be completely clear that's not what happened, and I succeeded in that. So. <laughs> Congratulations, Dot. Uh, awesome. You are, on this show at least, the nerdiest Narnie Weber. <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> I, you know, I have a YouTube channel called Narnia Nerd, so if you want that one, Dot. No, can, thank you. Have it. Okay. Or right. to stay on the podcast. So once again, a big thank you to everyone who helped put this together. You, the listeners, for submitting some questions, which, by the way, you did the job. You, we asked you to stump a Narnie Weber, and that happened on more than one occasion. I ran. We all burned up our stumps. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I, I did not. No, no, I, I left one on the and table. And still lost. I left one on the table. <laughs> I made up the title something our new ever. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's that. Anyway, thanks to you, the listeners. Thanks to, especially once again, to Patter Twigs Pal and Inkling for collecting the questions and putting all this together. So thank you for that. Let's give a round of applause for them. Thank you. And for those of you that your stump question was not used on the show, uh, that very likely will get used later in the season or next season. So we didn't use up all the questions. We no, still had more. No, we did not. There's we, still quite a few. We got some on the table over there. Literally, this table over there. We, <laughs> left, we left them on the table. And thank you to our studio audience for joining us today. <laughs> we have Anna and Hogglestock and Rydian's mom. What's your screen name? Grandmama. Okay. Until next time. Further up and further in.